Uh, the first talk is by Dr. Tsiamoulos, who is consultant in Kent University. And uh, we'll, uh, talk, his talk is entitled on optimal colonoscopy quality and performance metric. Dr. Tsiamoulos. Great. Uh, good morning, everyone. I know it's early morning, and um, I want to thank you very much, uh, the organizing committee and Dr. Katsogoridakis, as well as uh, my friend, close friend, uh, um, Taz, uh, for sponsoring this lecture uh, on behalf of the ARC design. So, we do know that uh, there is, uh, uh, with the advent of bowel cancer screening program, uh, there, is a, uh, there would be an increased number of colonoscopies uh, to be performed, and that number will increase rapidly. So therefore, all the operators, they'll have to maintain the skills for endoscopy, and they have to perform a colonoscopy in a, in a, timely, uh, in a timely fashion manner, in an efficient manner. During this trip, useful but practical hints and tips uh, should, should be required to anticipate a pro an, an optimal colonoscopy. The fundamental steps for an optimal colonoscopy are to achieve a good bowel preparation, to perform with an optimal technique, to utilize carbon dioxide, water, accessories, and to detect as many polyps as possible. Each step during this pyramid should be closely monitored and measured. That's why we do have the quality indicators. And the key quality indicator for optimal colonoscopy is the so-called adenoma detection rate. As we speak, this is the most uh, important surrogate for colonoscopy. And as we know, and as well stated in the literature, an ADR of less than 20% harbors a tenfold risk for, of developing post-colonoscopy cancer. On the other hand, when we have high ADR detectors, then the patients are being protected from bowel cancer, and in particular, in the proximal colon. An inverse proportional uh, relationship has been demonstrated in the very well-known Corley study, where every one increase of ADR reflects a 3% decrease in the risk of interval cancer. So if we take every step of the pyramid and based on the position statement of the European Society of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy, the state of bowel cleansing should be always audited and rated as adequate bowel cleansing or better. So we have to pursue the key points for a successful bowel preparation, which are to repeated assessment of the bowel uh, cleansing uh, scores like Boston or Taba, the timing as well as the split dose. This meta-analysis showed that the ADR is higher in high and intermediate quality of bowel prep compared to the low, low quality of bowel preparation. That means if we do have patients with intermediate quality, there's no need for further surveillance. Similarly, the split dose from, during this systemic review has proven to be superior today before bowel regimes. Every colonoscopy is always a new challenge for every operator, even in experienced hands. The colonic length varies, and failed colonoscopies are due to long, floppy, reductant sigmoid and transverse colons, very, very bendy flexures, and in, in women rather than men, in, especially when they do have previous surgeries in the abdomen. We strongly recommend to uh, apply a single hand technique because we think that that provides a, a scope, tip, and soft stability. And 
a really important market is the selection of the scope. The selection of the scope is a part of the clinical decision-making process, which makes uh, us more efficient to complete a safe colonoscopy. This statement has been reinforced by the Thomas Ross uh, Group, where they found that one of the factors that affects good quality in colonoscopy is the use of the latest instrument generation scopes. During insertion, which is very always challenging, there are some technological gadgets like the magnetic resonance scope guide. It offers a real-time extraluminal view. It provides a scope stability during insertion and designates an uh, abdominal compression. But mainly, the uh, scope guide facilitates the recognition, the prevention, and the resolution of the commonly uh, formed loops. On the contrary now, during the withdrawal technique, there could be some bad and some good moments. So the operator should be always be vigilant about the blind spots, the acute bendy flexures, and always be aware about the proximal sides of the fold. This is the reason that during withdrawal technique, we should always have in our mind to have a tip deflection, repeat segment viewing, and swift the scope right to left or left to right. This is an example of a bad withdrawal technique by one of the trainees at the early, early learning curve. And the trainer uh, saw at a glance something that was possibly missed. So he took over the scope and repeated the, the withdrawal. You see how meticulously and carefully is controlling the scope around the folds, behind the folds, using the tip deflection. In a few seconds, you're going to see what was missed. That was a mid-ascending carcinoma that was missed during the withdrawal. So we have to be always aware about the polyps located on the fold or behind the folds. Dynamic position changing is strongly recommended by two big publications, one from the Rex group and one from St. Mark's. When the patient is lying on the left side, left lateral side, then we have better inspection of cecum and ascending colon. When the patient is lying on the supine position, then we have better inspection of the transverse. And on the right lateral or halfway, we have better inspection of the splenic and descending colon. To utilize accessories, and, the, and really very recently, there's a lot of fuss about water assist colonoscopy, uh, which com comprises mainly the water immersion and the water exchange. The water immersion technique really um, is based on the use of water all the way through. And the water exchange is we exchange the carbon dioxide with water. So the water assist colonoscopy improves patient's comfort with less need of sedation, completes difficult colonoscopies, increases the ADR, in particular in the proximal colon, and also it has been useful tool for therapy for uh, treating sigmoid volvulus and polypectomy. We have the honor to uh, initiate a new randomized trial in UK with a water-assisted sigmoidoscopy, the so-called WASH, which my colleague tomorrow will present to you during the live. In the National Bowel Cancer Screening Program in the UK, there's a vigorous and intense training to be accredited to get a certificate of bowel cancer screener. It comprises many steps from written examinations to uh, assessment of, your, of the skills during diagnostic colonoscopy and during therapeutic colonoscopy. A recent audit was performed and we found the ADR 
is increased during the, within the na National Cancer Screening Program when we have a complete encyclical incubation, where there's an increased withdrawal time, more than six minutes, we have high quality of, of bowel preparation, the use of antispasmodic, there's a debate here, there's early start uh, of the procedure, and the greater the colonoscopy experience, the more the numbers of polyps detected. In terms of the accessories, we've been uh, the first to describe the, the endocuff uh, original. That was done in 2012. It's a small plastic, uh, very soft material, which is mounted at the tip of the scope, and it really enhances the optical field of view. It flattens the, the folds and provides a scope tip stability. We were able to identify polyps that, over the fold and assess the entire scar base during surveillance. And that was uh, confirmed by German studies with the looked in diagnostic colonoscopy and they found that there's an increase of ADR of 14.7% and of mean adenoma rate of 86%. But there was a revolution. So the initial curve, they had, there were some drawbacks. So there was some pointing, a bit pointing uh, and less rounded tip arms shorter and two rows, the proximal and the distal. We speculated that this could cause a bit of mucosal scratches, insignificant clinically, but it was not good you know, to the eye of the endoscopy. So we, in collaboration with, with our design, we redesigned that, and we came up with a new iterated version, the endocuff vision, which has one row less and more rounded tips. So we looked now at this device from a different perspective. So we conducted a service evaluation study within the screening program at St. Mark's, within four very experienced endoscopies, and we looked at three periods. So initially the period before, during, and after the endocuff use. We performed about 410 cases, and then we Look at the primary endpoints. So we looked at all the quality indicators, included ADR, MAP, time, and a new, uh, as Michael would say, a new uh, metric in the block, uh, the composite. Following the analysis, we found out we expected that there is an increase of ADR 16% uh, between the pre and the endocuff period, but there was no statistical significance. Uh, decrease of ADR after we removed the calf. However, if you look at the bar very carefully, you can see there was a kind of trend to increase the performance of the operators, possibly a training element during endocalf. Similarly, the MAP was also increased between the pre and the endocalf period uh, of 83%. There are similar results with the German studies. Again, there was no statistical significance after we took the calf off, but still, it was a trend to uh, find more polyps. So we, in a way, train the eye of the operator to find more polyps. But surprisingly, we found a very significant factor, the time. So we found that endocrine vision really decreases the sickle incubation time based on the, on the dynamics of, of the device, which tomorrow I'll speak to you during the live endoscopy. And there was a significant increase of time after we took the cuff off about two minutes. But to play the devil's advocate, someone can say you can really do very quickly, but is there any pain? Is there any discomfort? So we conducted a multi-variety regression analysis and we looked at the three factors, the ADR, the MAP, and the time. And as the Thomas Ross group said, the time you know, is, is not related to ADR, which is we confirmed that. But what was really surprising uh, in, in this in, uh, striking, I would say, um, uh, fact is that during the calf period, there was no increased requirement of, uh, of sedation and there was less uh, discomfort. So moving on to the new performance metric in symptomatic now, uh, uh, setting, we included, we now recommend a new metric which is called the composite. The composite uh, comprises the sedation, successful sickle intubation, and the patient co comfort. 
So if you combine all these circles, then you have the so-called sweet spot. So when all these circles, they, they, they overlay, this is where the, we should perform during, during colonoscopy. And this is the way to optimize and to measure accurately during the symptomatic setting. And we find again that endocuff having you know, the impact on sedation and comfort, it has also an impact on optimal colonoscopy. So we have more, uh, more colonoscopies optimally performed during the cuff period. Now, just very briefly to uh, mention the new, uh, in the literature, the new uh, performance metrics in the screening block. We have the SP6, it's very new. Uh, Professor Brass on this, uh, uh, and, and his team were, uh, were really working on uh, to introduce a new metric. The number of significant polyps detected per six minutes of withdrawal time. And why is that? Because SP6, we think it's superior than ADR, because when you find one polyp, the operator switches off his vine to find more polyps. The ADR does not include the serrated polyps, which now increasingly now been detected during uh, endoscopy. And we believe that when the SP6 is more than one, it could be a new benchmark to demonstrate not only uh, efficiency, but also high quality colonoscopy. There's a lot of discussions now within Europe and, and the States how to define the post-colonoscopy colorectal cancer. And should, should we say it's an important colonoscopy indicator? We don't know yet. We're in the process now to really uh, define the, uh, the nomenclature, but we looked within the UK and we found the post-colonoscopy colorectal cancer uh, benchmarker really was 80.6 between 2001 and 7. That was coming down to 2 .2, uh, 0 0.9 within the bowel cancer screening. Last but not least is a, is a study coming from the States where they, they introduce the, they suggest the polypectomy rate should be a surrogate for the surrogate. So the polypectomy rate is to check on the ADR. And they do a cross-sectional study and they found that uh, the polypectomy rate is higher in the proximal colon in the male gender. To conclude, I uh, just want to uh, recap and point out a few, the, the fundamental steps of the pyramid of optimal colonoscopy should be always aware and vigilant about the practical tips and tricks during colonoscopy, and do not forget it's a clinical decision-making process with multifactorial approach. ADI is a key quality uh, indicator for the time being, and is related clearly with the incidence of the terminal cancer. Endocap vision, the new uh, iterated version of endocap, seems to affect performance, but we need some more randomized trials, so it seems that it's faster, quicker, with less need of sedation and less discomfort. And we're just uh, looking forward to getting some more results from the new performance metrics to have better uh, measurement of uh, ultimate colonoscopy. Thank you very much.